Welcome everybody, this is podcast episode 246 and today I have a very special guest. Uh, we're we're going to have a lot to talk about because she's done some awesome stuff with Airbnb. Uh, this is Sophia Bach, welcome to the show. Hey. Are you excited? I'm so excited. Are you, are you nervous? I'm no? so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been doing this for a while, so I don't really feel it anymore. But I remember the first time when I when I put a camera on my face, I was I was sweating, I was shaking. Mm. So uh, I get it. Um, anyway, so okay. we're gonna we have a lot of things to talk about, but the main topic of today is how to build an Airbnb business without investing a lot of money uh, on the, on the budget, basically, because mm. uh, that's kind of what Sophia did. She had no money at all. Actually, she was struggling to afford her rent. And and she uh, she managed to pull herself out of that and actually build uh, a very successful and profitable Airbnb business here in Los Angeles uh, near the airport near LAX. Yep. So I'd say let's. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? I know you're originally you've lived in different countries and stuff, so you're not originally from here. Yeah, a so bit. so that's an interesting story in itself. So let's let's start there. Who's who's okay. Sofia Bach? Hi guys, I'm from Ukraine originally and um, I came to England when I was 13 so I went to school and college in London and straight after college I came out to LA and I was working in PR. Um, I spent about six years in PR and actually I, I really really hated it but um, I kind of felt uh, stuck in that job and I think uh, probably a lot of people can relate that you, you, you might not like your job or your colleagues or your bosses but you can't really leave when there's nothing else to fall back on um, so I had a little bit of you know that going on but eventually I just couldn't take it anymore and I quit and um, I went back to London and I was trying to find myself I was sort of trying to find my direction my path and um, I just I struggled with that it took a really long time I um, I went into the fashion industry thinking that's what I wanted to do and I did have some success in there. I worked with Italian Vogue and Russian Harper's Bazaar, and I thought that was, you know, a really cool experience. But I didn't feel like that was my path and my passion. So I kept looking, and I went into food, and um, I worked in the restaurant industry for a while. I was curating uh, food tours for uh, restaurant management students. So I brought people from Russia to to show them the best restaurants in London. I uh, have master classes from the best restaurants in LA and San Francisco and so on. But um, it turns out that that wasn't my path either. But um, I did end up coming back to uh, California eventually and I ended up in San Francisco. And um, I, was, uh, I was thinking of doing pop-up dinners. And therefore I rented this expensive apartment. <laughs> And um, the apartment had uh, this really large common space where you could do pop-up dinners. But uh, they weren't as successful as I thought they would be. I guess I needed to have more of a base, you know, ready clients. So uh, I wasn't doing very well and the apartment was really expensive. I was really worried that, uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to pay rent. And uh, it was getting to the point where I was... Um, I was really worried, what am I going to do about rent, basically. So I thought, okay, time to put the, you know, a living room on Airbnb and see what happens. And of course I was nervous, just like everyone else, thinking I'm going to have, you know, people coming in, possibly stealing something or possibly ruining something or it's just going to be uncomfortable. I don't know. Everyone's nervous the first time. But... After you have a few first guests come in and you realize how lovely people are and how not only is nobody stealing or making you feel uncomfortable, but people are actually really great and you're getting to meet all these exciting individuals from around the world. They made lots of great connections and uh, amazing friends and, and the money started rolling in, which was really exciting. And uh, all of a sudden I realized, you know, this is really... Like, it's not just that I can afford my apartment now, but actually I'm making an income. I'm making, like, I'm saving money. So uh, I really wanted to come back to L.A. and um, I did that for a year. And I managed to save up $15,000 saved. Uh, that's after paying rent and everything. So that was incredible. And you started with, mm -hmm. with nothing pretty much, right? Yeah, it was definitely nothing. Just 
you know, I, I didn't have any savings. I was just basically trying to pay rent. I was struggling to pay rent. By the way, what's a pop-up dinner? Oh, uh, so it's kind of like restaurants, but in, in people's homes, or maybe like you rent a, a space, like here in Santa Monica, you can rent a space and just like have a restaurant there for like a week or a month. It's like a temporary restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. That kind of reminds me of, there's there's a couple platforms out there, like Eat With mm -hmm. is yeah. one. And I think Feastly. Feastly, right? Where you mm -hmm. can, uh, it's kind of like an Airbnb yeah. for restaurants yeah. almost, right? You can do an Airbnb experience like that. Just, you know, invite people into your home and like cook for them and whatnot. Yeah. And I worked with chefs, so we, you know, I, I had access to chefs. So I was like thinking. That's Have you ever considered to... that? Uh, listing on Eat With or Feastly? Uh, I think we have. It just wasn't. It it wasn't going like, it wasn't getting going fast enough. So right. it, it was just it slowly but surely we were starting to get following, but it wasn't fast enough. Like I wasn't able to afford the apartment, so right. That's why uh, I ended up doing Airbnb. Awesome. Um, before we continue, shout out to everyone who's watching on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Feel free to comment. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, I see uh, Matt's there. Shout out to Matt. He's uh, he's uh, he actually is publishing a book, and uh, I'm going to be interviewing him later. So Matt, thanks for joining. We have Rafael. Um, he says he's uh, an Airbnb super host from San Juan in Puerto Rico. He's well he's, he's saying he likes the likes the live stream feed. Um, so thanks everybody for joining, and if you're listening uh, uh, to this podcast, uh, you can uh, actually watch his live, do these interviews every time at, on Monday at. 10.30 PST or 1.30 Eastern Time. All right, let's continue. So you, you found yourself in a situation, you were struggling to pay the rent, mm -hmm. and, and so you decided to try to rent out your, your okay. place on Airbnb, right? Mm -hmm. um, how yeah. did you manage it with the with the landlord? Did you ask the landlord for permission? I did not. I was very naughty and I sort of excused myself with uh, having, <laughs> you know, being in a desperate situation. I thought, uh, you know what, I'm just going to just do it. And if I get caught, I'll apologize and I'll stop. And uh, it, You know, there's a saying, it's better to ask for forgiveness than to <laughs> no, ask for permission. That is kind of the saying <laughs> I live by, so... Yeah. Um, however, now uh, my apartments are fully legal, legal with the city, legal with the landlord. Everything is very kosher. So even though I had uh, kind of naughty beginnings, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't do that anymore. And it, it feels great um, to be able to, you know, do everything properly without mm -hmm. hiding and, you know, pretending yeah. and whatnot. Yes, I'm trying to be as transparent as I can with my landlord actually right now. Right. That's great. Yeah. And you're uh, you're near the airport in Los Angeles. It's the neighborhood's yeah. called El Segundo, is it? Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's El Segundo. Okay, so, so there's no is there, are there no restrictions in your, in your neighborhood? No. Luckily, El Segundo is still legal. Uh, it's still legal to do Airbnb in El Segundo, but things in, um, in LA and in California are fairly volatile, so it can change. Um, but um, hopefully, you know, I'll be able to convince the city and I'm, I'm ready to go to the city meetings and you know, plead my case and uh, hopefully it's all going to be okay because I think we really do need some cool places to stay by the airport as the hotels are really, really boring. Uh, Mike is asking a question here, did you get a business license? I did get a business license because it is actually a business what I'm doing at this point. So I, as I was saying, I did save up. Uh, 15k and I, I spent it almost immediately because I rented three apartments all at the same time so I had to pay uh, deposits first month rent and I had to furnish them so uh, it was a lot um, it was a large expense but um, if you furnished an apartment for Airbnb you probably know that fifteen thousand dollars to furnish three apartments is and to start this kind of business is practically nothing um, one of my recent guests uh, Rashid that you met with Carl, who goes yeah. by Carl, he um, he and I were discussing furnishing our apartments, and um, I was trying to have him guess how much I spent to furnish the apartment he was staying in, and he said, "Well, I spend about ten thousand dollars to furnish uh, to furnish an apartment these days." And I said, "Well, I spent fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Yes. For your first one. Yeah. For the well, basically that's about how much I spent per listing. Yeah, per listing. Right." And so you you started with one, mm -hmm. you saved up fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars, right? But you were paying rent as well, mm -hmm. so you saved that money. Yeah, 
Like, and where were you staying yourself? Were you... No, I was actually just renting my living room, but I was really maximizing ah. profits because, um, so, um, just to paint a little bit of a picture. So it's a, it's a one bedroom apartment. I'm staying in my bedroom and the living room is um, up for grabs. And I just basically, I borrowed a bunch of mattresses, four mattresses from my neighbors. And I just, uh, I would pull them out when needed. And when you have more guests, you can charge a little bit more for extra guests. So I had groups of eight or nine staying <laughs> at a time. It's just basically people traveling and just uh, wanting like a floor to crash on or a floor mattress to crash on. <laughs> you basically started yeah. like the same way that Brian Chesky started. Yeah, exactly. And it was it's funny that it was just outside San Francisco in Alameda. And uh, I did have a lot of... They weren't air beds. I did have one air bed, but they were a little more comfortable than air beds, floor mattresses. Mm. Um, but yes, I was very forthcoming about what the sleeping arrangements are like so people don't expect like they're coming into a, like a luxurious kind of like right. nine beds for everyone. I was like, yes, we have mattresses, you know, you'll be comfortable, it's clean, it's cool, but you're not getting like a room for Yeah, this is not, it's not the Four Seasons. Exactly. <laughs> How much yeah. were you charging for those? Those um, I start. I actually just started charging at like fifty dollars a night, and then I went up to eighty, and then per um, each additional person was just twenty dollars extra. Okay. So, and did that include anything like breakfast? Yes. Or? Um, I did try to include as much as I possibly could, and I did um, provide breakfast. Um, I didn't make the breakfast. Sometimes I did, but mostly they were they just had access to my fridge with, where I had like nice bread and eggs and butter and jam and things like that and nice teas i have a really nice teacup collection so people were kind of excited what does about a it. ukrainian breakfast look like oh it's really really like unhealthy like fried <laughs> sausage and all kinds of things <laughs> actually you know i don't think we have like a traditional breakfast there's some some people eat cottage cheese in the morning or drink kefir or something mm. or pancakes like crepes so yeah Awesome. All right. So, uh, so you started with renting out just mattresses in your in your living room, mm -hmm. pretty much like the founders of Airbnb, how they <laughs> originally started, and you saved fifteen thousand dollars by doing this that, mm -hmm. and that's like because you were paying year. for your rent as well. Yes, I was paying rent. The rent was about three thousand dollars a month. So you were making more than than three thousand by renting out these mattresses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And wow, that's that's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. And and that, that fifteen thousand dollars that's that's just from your first Airbnb, right? It's not from like other businesses no, I or didn't, things that you were doing. Why was I doing anything else? I don't think I really I wasn't doing anything else. It was literally just I was trying to sell art out of the apartment as well, but I didn't sell yeah. anything. <laughs> so it was literally just because I was so busy and so many people were coming in and out all the time and I was just cleaning myself so I was uh, also pocketing the cleaning right. fee. You were doing everything so, yourself so you really focused yeah. on, you're almost running so, like a small bed and breakfast uh -huh. really, right? Exactly. So I guess the cleaning fee also I was making money on, on top of that. And then uh, with that $15,000 mm -hmm. you you rented three more apartments, mm -hmm. you used that money to pay for the you know the first couple months of rent I assume? Uh, first month rent, deposit and furniture. And furniture. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, you know, one apartment is like three thousand dollars or something, right? So then, yeah. it's, then there's not a lot of money left for the interior, the furniture. No. How did you, how did you manage to do that? Yeah, so I do have, a, I do have a, a whole list of things I was doing, to <laughs> to um, provide, and it's not, it's not like I was explaining to Jasper. It's not, um, Jasper. Sorry. <laughs> That's it's not. That's fine. I'm, I'm used to. The, the, I go to Starbucks and they, you know how they ask you for your name. Yeah. And then I say my name and like I've I've had up to like ten variations mm -hmm. of what they write down. You know, like Yasmin, Jasper, like Yasmin. lost, yeah, you know, all sorts of. I think I've seen seen Justin as well. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So I I just I actually thought it was important because I'm a I'm a. Uh, a fan of the show and people are always calling him either Jasper or Jasper and I could never tell which one it was so <laughs> I first thing I asked him when we met I was like how do you pronounce your name finally let's like, <laughs> let's get this the big mystery yeah let's get it right <laughs> finally um, so so I'm really thrifty and being I mean I guess everyone who knows me knows that you know I live really well on a shoestring budget I'm just used to it that's just been my life for many many years and I guess Ukrainians are that way in general. 
Um, so I did I did get into some debt, obviously, after setting up apartments. I think it wasn't just the savings that I had. Um, it was I also used credit cards in the end to pay for furniture. And then, you know, things are just now starting to kind of balance out. But um, so first, first of all, I wanted to say that it's really um, important to provide an Airbnb that stands out. And are we talking about my tips now or? Um, well, let's go to question yeah. first. How many listings right, do you have? Do in total, you have four now, right? I have four. I do live in one of them, so I only rent that out when I go away. And you don't do the, the living room anymore? No, I, it's all uh, private uh, yeah. accommodation. So yes. free standalone list, standout listings? Mm -hmm. One bedroom, another one bedroom that I just rented, and a two bedroom. And my own, which is a small one bedroom. And by the way, if you want to check out her listings, Please do. Uh, I actually, I actually put them up. I guess the easiest way to find them is to uh, to just um, uh, Google one of the titles. Mm. So let's see. If you if you Google new Insta worthy dinner party business LAX Echo Art or just Insta worthy <laughs> dinner party, probably nobody else has that. Insta worthy dinner party. Yeah, Insta worthy like Instagram worthy. Then uh, you'll probably find uh, her listings okay. near, or you search near LAX. You're pretty easy to find because the her listings actually show up uh, pretty high on the on, on the search result. Because you know, obviously, you've, and we haven't mentioned this yet, but Sophia is also a super host yeah. uh, with 93 reviews. And I was going through some of your reviews, and they're uh, they're pretty they're pretty awesome. I know. Um, <laughs> so proud. Matt is saying you should make a Facebook page for, for all of this. Oh, yes, it's on my list of things to do, Matt. <laughs> Thank you so much. I guess there's a lot of things on your list, on your face yeah, to do this. Yeah, a little bit like a rock. Right now. <laughs> but yeah, let's go to your, because uh, Sophia prepared a whole uh, list of tips yes. on how to do Airbnb on a budget. So if mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of money, but you yeah. still want to make money on Airbnb. And so how do you do it? Uh, forgive me, but I'm going to read from my list. What? Uh, you didn't? Because I. You I, don't know it by heart? Oh, I, I, oh kind of, I kind of do, but I, knew, I needed to make notes so I didn't forget I'm just, anything. I'm just messing with you. It's totally cool. Um, so. All right, let's um, go. Tip I number think one. Tip number one is it's really important to make your listing stand out, but you know you may not have a lot of money to like invest in an interior designer or go and buy really nice furniture or art and whatnot. So I think that just pottering around your house and looking around for things that you can frame or like finding art that may be laying around and framing it into something really cool um, already kind of gives you like a good starting point. And um, for frames, I recommend IKEA just because I realized in the end that these are the most inexpensive frames, but they're really cool. They're really modern and um, they have a lot of them on clearance as well often so you can um, find some good frames there and also finding like uh, things in your apartment which maybe you can turn into art for example just like household goods that you can like spray paint and make into something really cool like an old broken iron for example you can like spray paint it bright pink and then you know set it on the shelf and it's gonna look really quirky and cool um, and framing things like, uh, you know, like old posters or drawings or maybe just anything that you think might look cool or making your own collages or whatnot. Um, all of these things really make your listing stand out. They look great on photos and, you know, it's just, um, it's, you know, things that don't cost any money, but they're going to make you money. Um, I also thought uh, to seek out any artistic friends that you might have, like friends or family, maybe like you have like a younger sister that wants to do some upcycling for you or something. It's really trendy right now to like take old pieces of furniture and make them new and exciting and cool. And um, I, for example, say that, you know, my best friends are um, marble contact paper that you can find on Amazon and uh, gold... Uh, <laughs> A can of gold spray paint because everyone's like, oh, you love this gold spray paint and marble. Yeah, I turn everything into marble and gold and it looks really cool. Uh, but uh, also just having friends and family help with that, with those little projects and you know, turning things into, you know, garbage into gold, basically. Um, and you can get a lot of ideas from Pinterest on, on what to do. Um, Which tip was that, by the way? Is that number two? Two. Okay. Is it really much? No, number okay. three. No, okay. just, yeah, I'm just kind of nerdy, so I like to put numbers. Too. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tip number three. 
Um, so ask any artists that you come across, so maybe you know some artist, or maybe you're just walking around on the street and you see an artist trying to sell his art, maybe you'd like to talk to them and see if they might like to sell their art out of your Airbnb. Um, because you know you can put like little prices on them mm -hmm. and tell your guests that you're selling this art and uh, put it in your listing also. I can't say that I've had much success with that because mostly people are traveling and they don't have the room in their luggage to take things or they just, they're just they just not there to buy art, they're focusing on looking at it but not so much like buying it. But I think um, if somebody falls in love with something you're going to be able to sell and that would be cool for the artist and obviously you know maybe you can make a little commission but mostly it's great because you get to fill your apartment with amazing art and um, the artist benefits and you know, so will you obviously. Uh oh, <laughs> my tips disappeared. <laughs> Sorry. Unfortunately your phone didn't die. Yeah. Uh, so also I attacked, uh, attacked thrift stores um, looking for like exciting pieces to put into my Airbnbs. Like um, I look for cool frames or cool artworks. It's kind of hard to find cool artwork in Goodwill. It's mostly like mm, stuff that's really old and people don't like and throw away. But sometimes, you know, I have gotten lucky a couple of times. I have a couple of pieces that are really incredible. Uh, you'll probably see them on the photos in my listings if you have a look. All right, that was number four, now number five. If, I'm still at number four. Sorry. Oh, you're still at number four. <laughs> yeah, so it's not just thrift stores, it's also like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and this app uh, next door, which is kind of like Facebook for Neighbors, where you can find a lot of really cool furniture and art, and you know, just all of those places are great for looking for things on the budget. That's awesome. The, the app is called Next Door. Yeah, Next Door is like Facebook for Neighbors. We have it here in California. Oh. I don't know about anywhere else. That's cool, I've never heard of that. Yeah, uh, it's awesome. And um, IKEA clearance section is also awesome for finding like um, inexpensive furniture and uh, cool things to add to your apartment. Tip number five. Yay. <laughs> uh, so ask for donations from friends and family, uh, neighbors, and also on next door on this uh, app next door, you can also tell people that you know you're starting a business. If anybody's getting rid of anything, you'll be happy to come and pick it up, or you know buy it inexpensively and uh, I think you'll be surprised at how much people really want to help and uh, how much they're willing to donate um, to help you start your business um, so that's a really good way to also start on the shoestring and uh, tip number six was to start a design of your interiors uh, with a sofa bed because that's like the hardest thing to find I think that's um, that looks great and because they're quite expensive, but you definitely want one in your Airbnb because I personally never put sofas inside because no one can sleep on that. Well, one person can. So um, I always start by looking for a great sofa bed and then I just match everything else to that. So in one of my Airbnbs, I have a pink sofa bed. So you think it's kind of <laughs> hard to match That's things to That's my favorite color. Them. Really? <laughs> I never <laughs> see you wear <laughs> Okay, not next podcast you should wear pink. <laughs> okay, I'll see if I can find a pink shirt. Um, so, and then uh, you can, uh, by matching, I mean, uh, let's say you've got a gray sofa bed, you can uh, go on Pinterest and have a look at some ideas on how you can outfit your living room with uh, a pink or a gray or whatever sofa bed, because there's a lot of interior design ideas there, and uh, you can kind of start working from there and keep going. So you don't end up with like a lot of mix, mixed match, uh, mismatched furniture. Tip number seven. Yay, last one. And this is the last one. Yes, and it's really important. And uh, you know, even though I find some things on the street that I turn into art and repaint <laughs> and make you know like gold out of garbage, as I say, make them look cool. It's really important that whatever you buy, if it's second hand or if it's uh, you know you drag the coffee table from the street you really take a good look at it because uh, you don't want to be dragging any like bed bugs into your apartment and um, you want to make sure it's not broken beyond repair so just you know keep yourself and your guests uh, safe and uh, you know don't take any mattresses off the street uh, mattresses are really important to buy brand new I think right um, but um, yeah just be safe and just really uh, take a good look at the piece of furniture that you're taking second hand uh, to make sure it's not uh, something that's going to drag bed bugs into your apartment. I'm talking about yeah. bed bugs. Mm. Hi Mike. <laughs> Mike, are you still there Mike? 
Uh, Mike is uh, renting out in Venice, but uh, he told me I can't talk about the bed bugs anymore. So oh well, no, well, and that's why we're talking <laughs> about them again. Let's um, talk about Mike's bad experience recently. Yeah, so like, I, you know, we, we've, I mean, by the way, these awesome tips. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely learned something from that, from things that I never thought about. Um, um, but we have a lot of other things to discuss. Um, but yeah, let's go to your recent mm -hmm. horror right. story mm -hmm. and more importantly, yeah. how to prevent horror stories on Airbnb. Right. How do you make sure you don't get those guests that you don't want? Yeah, well, this is going to be uh, short and sweet finally because I've, I've been doing this for two years and I've had nothing but fantastic guests. I just like, I can't tell you how much I love the people that have come across uh, my doors, but and I told Jasper this is Jasper. This is his fault because I was at um, at his hangout in Santa Monica, uh, networking with you know other Airbnb hosts, and you know just it was just a really fun, exciting event. So thanks for hosting that. And uh, I get a, a you know the Airbnb sound on my phone. I get a last minute booking, which I got kind of excited about because the apartment was sitting there empty for a week for some reason in July so that was really strange usually I have really high occupancy uh, but uh, so I get this booking and I get kind of excited about it but mostly and you know everyone's kind of egging me on people are getting excited oh look at her she got a booking <laughs> So um, I realized that I just had the bed, my bed, one of the beds outside the apartment because I was switching beds with my neighbors and I'm not going to get into that, but the bed was outside the apartment and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, the bed is outside, what do I do? So I'm trying to solve a problem instead of focusing on who's coming in, Right. which is to me even more important maybe to like a, than a regular host because I rent these apartments. I have a landlord and a manager who are watching me all the time. And, uh, you know, I love my neighbors. I don't want to put anyone in a, in a dangerous situation. But what happened was I was focused, like I said, on this bed situation, on solving this problem. And I was like, I said, like five gin and tonics in. And all of this contributed to the fact that I didn't even look at who this person is. So I click accept and I go back to the, to the event and the next day uh, my neighbor tells me, did you see your guest? Did you see who came in? And I'm like, no. So anyway, long story short, they turned out to be like five guys who are really like unsavory looking and I was trying not to judge a book by its cover. So I went and I kind of said hi and, you know, make sure they're okay. They seemed a little sketchy, but I was just, you know, I was trying to be cool because they're already in and they're not causing any problems. So I figured no big deal. Well, the problem started rolling in. First, there was a noise a complaint from the neighbors upstairs. We went and handled that. Then they parked their huge van into my tiny little parking space. And it says in the listing and in the messages that we have tiny spaces that if you have a van or a truck, you have to park on the street. So I had to go over there and ask them to repark the car. And then um, I got a message from the manager telling me that they're smoking. At which point I was furious because obviously they're not reading anything, you know, in my rules and uh, they're now they're causing problems for me with my manager who is right away seeing the landlord. So, um, so I, I went over there, they went there, I called them, uh, they told me that they were out, nobody was smoking. And the next morning I said, well, maybe it was somebody else, maybe the manager is just blaming me because I'm the one with the Airbnbs. The next morning um, I get another complaint and again I go over there and talk to them, at which point they get angry with me and they come to my door and start yelling at me and swearing at me and just really, really scared me to the point that I, um, when I called the Airbnb, I said that I wasn't going to call the police and I wasn't going to write them a bad review because frankly, I'm afraid that they're going to come to my door and either uh, throw a brick through my window or they're going to wait for me outside the apartment and you know, do something to me. So um, when they left, um, I found that uh, a bunch of things were broken in the apartment, stolen, and uh, just, um, it was just, it was just, too much for me honestly I just I got really emotional because I just and also they yelled at me and told me that my apartment was too small for five people which I can host nine people in there so 
that was uh, that was really weird. It was just you know painful because I put so much effort into my apartments. I paint everything. I just you know I really try to provide people with exciting places to stay, and everyone is so happy. And then all of a sudden, not only is someone unhappy and complaining about it, but they also just thought they would just destroy things. So sorry, I thought it was gonna be short, but I went on and on about it. <laughs> I apologize. The moral of the story is there's only one lesson in this and don't ever, ever, ever drop the ball and not check who's coming into your apartment. Always, always, always check. And these last minute bookings are the most um, dangerous ones because uh, people are kind of counting on your desperation and uh, you are not having the time to check who they are. So it's just really important to uh, you know, make sure that you check every single person out. And uh, I do let people in without reviews, but I talk to them first. I kind of fill them out. I explain that it's important to me. They don't jeopardize my relationship with the landlord, that this is my business. So usually um, I never have these issues and I, I wouldn't have had if I really checked him out because it was kind of, I think, obvious. You know, he had no reviews and the photo was really weird and probably the way they would have spoken to me would have Was this an instant me. booking? Uh, it wasn't an instant book because he had no reviews. And oh, right. Instant book, sorry, I got something there. Instant book never worries me because um, they actually automatically check for right terrorism uh, watch list for sex offenders and for criminals. So when somebody instant books, it means that they already have good reviews and they've been checked out and everything. So I never worry about those, but. It's the people who are sending requests without reviews and um, don't have like verified ID or whatnot. Those are the ones that you really need to check out. So just the point is that screening is immensely important and you know it's better to lose some money versus like let somebody in last minute and um, end up in a situation like this, which has really jeopardized my relationship with the landlord like to the point that I'm really scrutinized now and um, uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a bad few days, but but everything's going to be okay. Better things have grown from this situation. And yeah. I really needed the reminder, so uh, never to let the ball drop. Never, yeah. Don't forget to check your guests. Mm -hmm. It's funny because our, our buddy Mike mm -hmm. uh, had a similar experience where uh, he recently had some some Airbnb guests that caused some trouble, and and that was like the one time he forgot to look at the reviews, mm -hmm. and then he looked back in the reviews, and then it actually. Uh, some other hosts had mentioned it as well that these guests were causing trouble so it's learning lesson always never drop the ball on this always check you know who you accept look at the profile yeah. look at the picture does the person write a lot about themselves i find that people who write a lot of stuff about themselves in the profile mm -hmm. um, are generally like great guests because mm -hmm. you know it just shows something about your character if you're taking the time to yeah. really you know take your profile serious uh, put a nice picture on there and uh, and write some stuff about yourself. So um, you obviously the reviews um, as well, and and also by communicating with people, mm -hmm. just sending some messages and seeing, okay, does this person respond fast? This is this person polite over over the messaging as well? You, yeah. you can kind of like get an idea of, of of who you're dealing with, right? All right, let's go to the next. Oh yeah, by the way, um, I wanted to mention a couple things. First of all. Your story kind of reminds me of Jago Korea, and for those who have been listening to the podcast for a very, very long time, uh, you might have uh, recognized his name because I interviewed him in 2014. Uh, he lives in uh, Buenos Aires, and he was in a similar situation. He couldn't afford his rent, and so he told his landlord, "Hey, I uh, I can either you know stop renting your place, or I, or you have to allow me to rent it out on Airbnb in the weekends," and that was kind of um, his start of, of his Airbnb Imperium that he has now. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's managing a lot of listings now in Buenos Aires. And uh, he was studying at the time and he never actually got a real job. He just, you know, he saw how much opportunity there was on Airbnb and, and he, uh, you know, he built a whole business around it. So if you're interested in a similar story, uh, then check out episode 21 with Jago Korea from Buenos Aires. Um, another thing I want to mention was that you know, what I find really inspiring about your story is that you find yourself in a, in a situation that most people would label as not a good situation, right? Um, you, know, you know, you're struggling to pay rent, but out of that situation, you actually managed to create something 
that you probably wouldn't have created if you weren't in that in that quote unquote bad situation, right? Absolutely. And that really reminds me of a uh, uh, of a speech by uh, Steve Jobs. I just pulled it up here on my computer. It's uh, if you want to watch it on YouTube, it's it's an amazing speech and it has so many learning lessons. I think I've probably mentioned it before, um, but uh, it's called Steve Jobs Stanford Commencement Speech 2005, and it has almost 10 million views. And it's one of the things that he talks about is how you can't connect the dots looking forward, right? So you find yourself in a in a position, and maybe you've lost your job, you can't pay your rent, or you know whatever it is. Like in Steve Jobs' example, it was he he dropped out of college, and as a result, he signed up for uh, a how do you say it? Like, you know, the, the beautiful letters, calli calligraphy or something? Calligraphy. Yeah, calligraphy. Of course. <laughs> yeah, he oh. signed up for it. And then as a result, you know, that was one of the, 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 the factors that made Apple yeah. uh, successful, right? It was the beautiful fonts and everything. Mm, so, that. you know, and he says, so you can't connect the dots uh, looking forward, but you can, you can connect them looking backwards. And so I, I guess for me, what I've learned from it is whenever I find myself in a situation that where I kind of automatically labeled it as bad, I just think, okay, you know what? Something good is probably gonna come out of this, mm -hmm. right? Because if you find yourself in a challenging situation, that's how that's when you um, uh, you push yourself to things outside of the box and you do things that you otherwise probably wouldn't have done, and then you know your situation can actually improve from that. So mm -hmm. I think that's really uh, that's really inspiring. But that's actually happening to me again right now because of the bad guest situation. I was, uh, like I said, I'm being you know, scrutinized by the landlord now and I just felt like I was on the verge of losing my business, which is everything to me. And right. uh, I just, uh, you know, I was worried and then I just realized, you know what, I need a building. I need just my own building, no managers, no uh, you know, neighbors to worry about. And I love my neighbors, but I just... Think it would be better if just everyone in the building was an airbnb so it would be really cool to have this art um apartment and uh i just it, it's really weird because i'm being approached by people who want to do this with me so there's just so much opportunity suddenly from this horror right. story awesome so, really so maybe excited. maybe in a year or so we can do another podcast and you can talk about how this bad experience with your guest led to now you managing a whole building exactly yeah. that's awesome I love it. Um, one question I had as well was, how did you initially approach the landlords mm -hmm. of the apartments that you rented Sure. to allow you to rent out an Airbnb? Um, I forgot how exactly I came through uh, Eric Moeller, but maybe from maybe from your podcast, podcast. Uh, 175. Oh, there you go. Okay. It's one of the one of the most popular podcasts. Uh -huh. Actually, I looked at the downloads. That one, that one's by far the most uh, downloaded episode. Well, I gotta beat that. Yeah, well, of course. I'm, I'm very competitive. <laughs> Everybody it's downloads hard to beat the podcast. It's hard to beat Eric. Can you? Yeah, I know. Oh well, uh, but I can try anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Eric had this uh, Airbnb must Mastery Summit that yeah. he did like a, a year ago. And uh, on that summit, one of the guests was um, Brian Page, who does exactly what I'm doing right now. He actually teaches people how to, uh, how to rent apartments from landlords and then release them on Airbnb. So I went ahead and I did the course, um, which I found relatively useful. And um, I just, um, you know, I got the confidence from him, I guess, to approach landlords and offer them this uh, opportunity. So uh, I just, when I was moving back to LA, I just started approaching every landlord I can find on Craigslist because on Craigslist, they are less, um, there's less management companies and more independent landlords. Mm -hmm. um, so I found, uh, I probably wrote to about a hundred landlords and out of them, wow. One said that they will maybe think about it, at which point I just started, <laughs> you know, bugging him until he said yes. Um, and I just gave him a, like a slew of reasons and why this is a good idea because, you know, Airbnb guests are actually less impactful on the property than actual tenants, that I do this professionally, we have a registered company, it's insured, that uh, there's less, you know, water waste, and we have, you know, pet-free policy and all, all sorts of reasons that made him feel like maybe this is a good opportunity for them but i think also i got lucky because they um they just renovated a property and they really needed tenants mm -hmm. 
So initially I was coming in to rent a two bedroom apartment uh, where I was going to uh, rent a living room and a bedroom on Airbnb. But um, he was doing good deals and I was able to, I, I took the two bedroom and then I ended up taking a little one bedroom for myself as well. And then I ended up taking another one bedroom just because it was just a good opportunity and he was willing to do it. Um, I think as he got to know me, he felt a little bit more relaxed about this whole like, Airbnb business. So uh, we rewrote the contract to make sure I'm legally allowed to do Airbnb, VRBO, whatever I want to do. Um, that I'm allowed to change the locks because I put automatic August locks on my doors. And something else we changed in there. But anyway, we changed the contract. So yeah. August how locks. How are how those locks working out for you? Um, so, so I think they, they can be easier than they are. Uh, people love them and uh, I love the fact that I don't have to pass on the keys. But I don't love the fact that every single guest I have to go into the app, input their phone number manually. Like it's not synced with Airbnb and it really mm. should be. And I just, I don't understand why this company wouldn't somehow make things Sync easier. Sync with Airbnb, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not as, it's not the easiest to use. So get on it, August. I think we have a guest from uh, Russia checking in because uh, if, if my Russian is uh, correct, I uh, Privet, yeah. that means hello. Privet, <laughs> Um what I was going to say, okay, so one thing I wanted to note is you, you said like you felt a little bit lucky because this, you know, this landlord I was really looking for somebody, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, you wrote a hundred people, mm -hmm. right? That's a lot of people. Yeah. So I just wanted to... But you just need one. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, the way I see it is like, I don't think that was luck. Mm -hmm. I mean, you took action. Mm -hmm. You wrote a hundred landlords. I mean, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And you found one person who was who was willing to do it, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I, you know, I just want to give you props for for taking action and Thanks. reaching out to so many people, and you know, you created your own luck, right? Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Um, let's see, what are, what else do we have to talk about? We've talked about a lot of things. <laughs> By the way, I love the name of your business, Art B and B. Thank you. Um, we already talked a little bit how how you implement uh, art in your mm -hmm. in your listings and stuff. Um, let's talk about uh, Egypt because Sof Sophia was the person who told me about Egypt. Uh, I uh, I actually went over I flew over to Egypt to check out apartments. Fortunately, there there was also kite surfing there, which was awesome. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, tell us about your experience in Egypt because you know you initially found out about mm -hmm. this this opportunity. Yeah. So I, I heard uh, from a friend of mine who bought an apartment in Egypt that, that there are apartments available for $5,000 to buy. Just 5000 cash in the apartment. Sounds like a steal. It sounds like a steal or a scam or whatever. And obviously, you know, everybody's shocked when they hear about this, but it's absolutely true. Um, the, the thing is... So I thought about going, but then I invested into my business and I didn't go. But then I was listening to Jasper's podcast and he was talking about changing direction into um, traveling around the world and like looking for properties abroad to buy for Airbnb and I thought I need to tell him about Egypt and as soon as I told him he said great I'm going <laughs> and I was just like oh no no if, he, if he's going that means I need to go right now because if he's gonna do this I need to go and I need to follow his footsteps and so, you know, we, we figured out dates and uh, he, actually I ended up going first and it's a really good thing that I ended up going first because if I went at the same time with Jasper, I probably would have had a much better experience, but it's a good thing that I had a bad experience because um, I saw the, the reality, what it's really like to be there as an Airbnb guest or any guest. Um, and you know, Jasper was in a nice hotel and maybe if I was in a nice hotel, I would have been like swayed a little bit more by apartments. I would have seen this apartment and thought, well, this has potential maybe. And I wouldn't have had the opportunity to walk to the beach from the apartment or hear all the stories from people who actually buy these apartments there and live there. So I went, um, a little early to catch my friend who's actually bought the apartment and was living there. Well, she was, li she was living between there and Ukraine. And uh, when I got there and uh, I started hearing about all the challenges, I realized there's just no way, no how this would work on Airbnb. At least, you know, 
for me with this budget because uh, first of all you can't find a decent cleaner in Egypt and it's very apparent because when you walk around the city it's just there's a lot of mess everywhere there's like rubble there's diapers everywhere they just they just don't like cleaning I guess <laughs> so and uh, when you're an Airbnb host and you live in another country how can you check after the cleaner and I have no luxury of like switching 10 cleaners until I find the best one so that didn't make sense and then paying a lot more didn't make sense either because you have to rent the apartment for so little like your competition there are really inexpensive five-star hotels and other airbnbs which rent for like ten ten dollars a day <laughs> so if you're like renting it out for ten dollars a day and then like how much do you have to pay the cleaner like 50 cents and what kind of job are they gonna do yeah with that so that didn't, that was the first reason. The second reason I feel is like, you can't really trust. Um, I didn't feel like I could trust people there with the keys. I was hearing stories that the concierge would uh, use your key to go inside the apartment and chill out, and then they wouldn't clean up after themselves, and they can like pass on the key to their friends or family or something. So I didn't feel like I could have like a person I could trust on the ground. And lastly, my decision was basically based on the fact that um, I did not want to invest in that country. Since I got there, I felt really tense and I was just, I just felt harassed endlessly. Like there was so much rudeness and uh, I just, I just felt really uncomfortable and walking from the apartment to the beach was uncomfortable. Like you're just approached nonstop and just, you know, they're sitting next to you, watching you while you're on the beach. They're swimming up next to you. They're, like, grabbing your swimsuit. Uh, when I say they, I mean, like, there's a lot of, like, teenagers running around and kids. And, uh, anyway, you get harassed by everyone, like, young or old in that place. Well, I did, anyway. And uh, I just felt like people wouldn't, you know, th there were too many reasons for bad reviews. Like, they, there's a lot of roaches running around and, um... All kinds of things, like, like birds, yeah, giant cockroaches, rats coming through the shower drains or the toilets. The rats? rats. Oh wow! So when I heard <laughs> from people who lived there about all of this stuff, I was like, there's just too many chances to get a bad review. Yeah. Like either it's the cleaning, or a rat will make its way in, or a pigeon will, you know, crawl over the balcony. Excuse my French. Or, you know, they'll find the dead roach in the sink, like I did when I was looking at apartments. Like, who shows apartments when there's, like, a dead roach in the sink? A dead sink? cockroach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was just, it was kind of another another little horror story. So I flew in, and then two days later, I flew the hell out. and then Two days? Yeah. Two After two days, you're like, I'm done, I'm out of here. I was done <laughs> probably the next day, but I was, you know, I, I was... Uh, thinking about things like well, maybe I can rent it out and not do Airbnb and then I thought well I need uh, you know return on investment right now it doesn't make sense and then the entire city is being built it's not just that little area it's like everything is being right. built and it's half built so yeah, yeah that's worth mentioning so we actually went to Urgada mm -hmm. uh, which is a very popular tourist destination uh, for especially for Europeans a lot of Russian people a lot of German people there mm -hmm. but also some people from my country as well uh, most of the tourists stay in five, all-inclusive five-star resorts. It's it's kind of like a, a cheap holiday destination. Um, and so they're building all these different resorts. And, and like Sophia said, it's true. You, you can actually buy something for like five, ten thousand dollars there. Which, you know, it sounds like a great deal. And, um, and who knows? Maybe it will turn out to be a great deal. But I also felt like... They're, they're building so much mm -hmm. and the prices like you said are so low that you know even if even if you're making um, you might be making a reasonable return but I think that as soon as there's some extra costs it just completely evaporates your your profit so that's one of the reasons that I didn't end up uh, investing but also I have a, one very simple rule I only want to invest in places where I would like to stay myself mm -hmm. And that was just not the case over there. There was mm -hmm. only one place where I could see myself coming back. Mm -hmm. And that's either uh, the kitesurf school where I, I hung out and where I kitesurfed. Because the kitesurfing is amazing, actually. Like, if you were into kitesurfing, check out Urgada. It's it's one of the, it's probably the best place I've ever been for kitesurfing. Um, so, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to stay there. 
I would just want to chill with the with the kite surfing people in the kite surfing school, and, that, and that's about it. Or maybe the uh, the the Sheraton. I noticed there's a Sheraton, mm -hmm. and they have rooms for like seventy five bucks, and it's, it's super luxurious. So you know that that's always it could always be. You had option, a much but... nicer experience than I did. <laughs> well, I didn't get harassed by any like yeah. Egyptian boys who wanted to like take my uh, clothes off and stuff. I don't know why. Like, <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, no. I mean, I had a I had a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I I just decided not to invest. I had a bad experience, but I'm really glad that I went. If I didn't, I would be thinking about it forever, and I yeah. was really convinced that this was Absolutely. an opportunity. So it is important to see with your own eyes, I think, and to really see from the perspective of someone who lives there or who rents Airbnb. So wherever it is you go, really, you know, check it out. Um, yeah. Absolutely, you know, it's better to just stay in a nice hotel. It's better to regret things that you do than than regret, regret things that you don't do mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. no totally like when you see an opportunity you just jump on it and you know if it doesn't work out cool that's fine yeah um let's see oh yeah there's one uh, another thing you're, you're kind of looking at and that's mm -hmm. italy yeah so my my next crazy idea <laughs> is i heard that there are uh, one euro homes available in italy um just basically you pay the city one euro and you get this pile of rubble that you can renovate and make into an amazing you know airbnb or whatever it is you want really um of course the money that needs to be invested into that is substantial it's about twenty five thousand uh, euros at least to renovate something like that but um I think that's an amazing opportunity also. So depending on what happens with my, you know, with things that are going on here right now, whether I'm like working on a building or not, I'm actually thinking about Italy as well. I really love Italy and I think it would be amazing to do something there. Even if it's a very remote place, Italy gets visitors everywhere mm -hmm. all year round. So that would be a really cool thing to do to like renovate it and make it full of art and like really cool place to stay in the middle of nowhere. But yeah. It's actually not in the middle of nowhere. Those things are like um, those um, uh, buildings are available in small villages in Italy and Sardinia, and uh, they're really beautiful and uh, the people there are really cool apparently. So it's uh, another interesting opportunity if you don't have a lot of cash and you can find someone to invest with you. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it, it sounds amazing, right? Buying a house for like one euro, mm -hmm. but uh, but yeah, you're gonna have to invest. A bunch of time like I'd be interested in doing the investment mm -hmm. um, but I'm not I'm not really that interested in like doing, doing the, the work doing all the, yeah, yeah. Doing the work <laughs> I am <laughs> I'm so, so, I sound so lazy that's now, but, why <laughs> yeah that's why it would be it's just awesome. not my thing like interior design mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't know anything well you know it. someone who does so yeah maybe yeah. we can team up exactly stay tuned I mean it's definitely I definitely believe that these uh, you know like little villages with like these old buildings and stuff I, I really do believe that there's an excellent opportunity there mm -hmm. because you know people want more and more they want authentic experiences they mm -hmm. want to go off the beaten track you know they don't want to just do the things that all the other tourists are doing mm -hmm. and so you know I think uh, if, you know going with that trend I think investing in, in some old you know 18th century like a little country house in, in Italy could be uh, could be incredible. could be an incredible investment yeah. for sure Absolutely. alrighty Let's see, I think we've gone through, we've been talking for about 50 minutes, time flies. Um, you're actually How perfect uh, podcast guest because uh, you, 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 you talk pretty easily, so like, I don't have to ask too many questions. Oh, great. <laughs> um, but Anytime. did we miss anything or I think we've, we've talked about everything, right? I can, I can go on and on, but you know, I'm actually trying to contain myself. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, so yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sophia, for joining me today. I, I definitely learned a lot, and uh, you know, I think it's really awesome how you uh, you know managed to build your business starting with absolutely nothing. I think it's inspiring, and I'm sure other people will find it inspiring as well. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, you know having you back in the podcast maybe in a year or so, and, and, and checking out your your Airbnb art. Uh, apartment building that would be amazing that would be absolutely amazing so thanks everybody for watching on facebook and instagram awesome to uh to see that uh, people have been joining asking questions and commenting and stuff uh, and of course if you're listening to the podcast thanks for listening and don't forget every monday 10 30 a.m pst and every and that's like 1 30 
p.m. EST. I sometimes mess up these times, so I just gotta make sure I say it correctly. Um, I'll, do be, I'll be doing a live one every Monday. If you want to come check it out on Facebook or Instagram, that'd be awesome. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.